Okay, so since we've been taking a little while to do the whole coding review, uh, we decided that we were going to do a short overview video of the most important concepts of the project in the meanwhile while we managed to set everything up to be able to do a review, right? So first we're going to start off with the game, right? We're going to give more or less a demo of the game, which I actually don't think will be shown. So I gotta do this, let me put this over, right, okay, here we go. Um, the game is pretty straightforward, you have a character that is moving by itself, right, it's a food, if anyone's played a dinner dash type game, they will probably instantly recognize it. Normally the games you move manually, but since this is such a simplistic rendi like rendition of the game, we decided to make it move by itself to add a little bit of difficulty to it, right, the game uh, is you see the burger that each customer wants, each customer has a level of patience. As the patient runs out, they start turning more and more red as you can probably see by this first scientist person here, right? And by pressing E, you can interact with the different counters, right? Each of these are different counters with a different set of ingredients, right? The only, like they, they all work just by interacting with E, except the empty one, which is you press C to clear whatever burger you have, right? Right now I only have a bun, if I press C, it leaves. The plate one, you can press R, and it'll go through every customer, checking each customer if any of their burgers match with the burger that you've been forming. And if they do, it'll give it to them, they'll leave, and you'll get the, the money from it, right? The other thing, uh, the, the other special thing, I guess, is the burger right where you press E on the burger and the burger essentially starts cooking and as the burger gets cooked its hue or its saturation of the image goes up right and if you leave it too long when you press E if it's quote unquote burned it'll just throw it away it won't put it up there right if we give it a second and we wait till it turns black let's see okay no that one was still good um, but essentially if it's too burned it'll not get accepted and it'll be thrown away, right? And that's pretty much it for the mechanics. They're pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. Um, I wanted to make the distinction that this is a counter because I know up until this point we've been using the word counter as, you know, integers going upwards and here counter is more of a table. Right, so in the specs, when they tell you to change the counter, what it means is to take this empty counter and change it to a counter of your own creation with your own ingredients. So you would have to create your own item and make your own instance of a counter with that specific item and then replace it for that empty counter. And when it says to take the plate counter and give it the functionality of the empty counter, what it means is that you need to take the plate counter and press C on it to clear the burger, right? So the same functionality that the empty counter is giving you, you need to give it to the plate counter. So now the plate counter is going to have both functionalities, okay? Then from there, I'll uh, show you a little bit of the code, right? Here we have our base counter, and this is the basic render of the counter, basic tick, how it interacts, uh, every counter has an item, and every counter has a width, right? So for example, when I go in and I create my bread counter, all I have to do is extend the base counter, and now it automatically has all the attributes of a base counter. And then when I call the constructor, instead of asking for a, an image variable up here, since every bread counter is gonna have the same image, I directly pass the image I want into the superclass, right? And then I say its item is gonna be a new item, and the item is going to have this image. So when you want to make your own counter, all you have to do is follow this scheme and it shouldn't really be that difficult, right? If we go to the items, there's also all the items here that you could access, right? So here, instead of doing this, what I could also do is item equals, and then I could say item dot, and this is bread counter. I think this is the bottom bread, so I would say item dot bottom bread right and either those work this might be a little older version so maybe that's already how it's working but 
regardless, both alternatives work. Uh, the other clarification I wanted to make is that when the, oops, I pressed the wrong button. Um, when the instructions tell you to add an object to the world, what it's telling you is these objects, like, you know, actual objects, not Java objects. So you need to create an image of an object. You could use some of the pictures that were given to you. You can create your own pictures. You you pick how, how you want to bring this object into the world. But essentially, you need to add, for example, a plant or, you know, another type of rug or a random person standing in a corner. You know, your imagination is quite literally your limit there, right? Uh, here you see that you have, for example, the, cla the class drink. Class drink is not really being used. That is completely up to you. Okay. Okay. So continuing where I left off, the other thing that I want to quickly go over is essentially how the burgers are done, right? So there are two main classes, right? The first one is the order class. The order class is just contained of a value, which is how much they're going to pay for this order, a drink, which is not really used right now, and a food, right? Food just has a value that it's passed down, right? And what well, the only thing we're using right now for food is just burgers, right? And if we go to the burger class real quick, we see that it extends food. That way we can cast and access it and not have to like, you know, if you want to make some other food, then it doesn't have to like extend burger. Now you have like an upper class that you can branch off to add other food items. Right, so how a burger works is that it has two lists, a list of images and a list of items. And the list of items essentially lets you know all the items that are in a burger. And you have uh, two main methods, right? It's add ingredient, which just literally adds the item and the sprite to each corresponding list. And the render, which goes through every sprite and adds them one by one, right? So how a client works, let me go to the client, is essentially when a client is created, they're assigned a random patient, and then we have the original patients, right? So that even if its patient is going down, we know what the original patient was. From there, we have a variable called number of ingredients. This will determine how many ingredients besides the bun and the meat the burger will have, right? The constant is the bottom bread and the burger meat that's always added no matter what then i add to the food item a new burger and in the position of this client then i add a value of one for the burger and the bread and then i go from zero to the number of ingredients and i grab another random number and this time from one to four and I say, so from one to three, sorry. And I say, if it's one, it's lettuce. If it's two, it's tomato. If it's three, it's cheese, right? And every single time that you add an ingredient, raise it by 0.5, right? So each ingredient is 0.5 and each food or each order will cost depending on how many ingredients it has. So the bigger the burger it is, the more points you'll get from it. And then once you're done, you add the top bread. That is essentially how the client works and each tick their patient goes down and if the patient is below zero then say that they're leaving and if they're leaving don't draw them right and the move all it does is move it x amount of pixels down right and now to quickly go over the specs um right let's do a quick overview of them the warm-ups first ones are pretty straightforward background music background image You've done that in Snake. Objects, I already explained that before. This is what I meant, like a table, a share, everything along the line. It doesn't have to be a Java object. It just has to be, you know, a, a real world object. Then it says create a new type of counter. I was already explained that. You're exchanging it for the empty counter, which is this one. And then this one, it says, so if the client is served before uh, his patients reached half. So if his patients was 300, well, if his patience is above 150 when his order is given, then whatever the total value inside of the order was, raise it by 15%, right? It changed the base speed of the player. So make him slower, make him faster, that's up to you. And then make it so that when you press shift, he moves slower. 
how much slower? Up to you. For the phase two, uh, here it says getting the order exactly right. This word exactly right doesn't really need to be here, right? I could just say once you give the order to a client before he leaves, obviously, because you can't give it when he leaves, then a fourth of the patients uh, of all other of all other clients is given back, right? So if I give a burger to someone, everybody else's patients raises by a fourth of their original patients, right? And then have the chef be able to serve any specific customer by pressing the keys one through five, right? So right now when I press R, any client that has the burger that you have will take it, right? So we want to change it that if I press one, it'll only when I press R serve the first client on the list to the second, third, the fourth, and so on up until the fifth, right? So we want to change that base functionality. We no longer want to serve anyone, right? Be the reason for this is that if two people have the same burger, we don't want it to be random who I give it to, right? So instead of going through all of them, I want to always have one selected, you know, start by one of them being selected. And then when I press the corresponding key, it'll change. Keep in mind that when somebody leaves, todo mundo, everybody rotates down, right? So whoever was second now is first, right? So you can't, um, you can't take a client and say you're going to be two, right? It's in reference to the line, right? So you want to do it by index, okay? And then you, have to, you want to add a new counter with the ability that is being told here, right? That's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the phase three is uh, you need to create a special client called an inspector. If he doesn't get the food in time and he leaves, you'll lose half of the money you've earned up to that point, and all future customers will have 6% less patience. Okay? But if he does get what he wants, everybody's patience will go up by 12%, and all future clients will have 10% more patience, right? So if Ante the least a client could have was 100, and the most they could have is 500, then both of those need to go up by a 10% in the future, right? Then you need to create another one called TV, and the, as the patients go down, every 8% that it goes down, they will lower another client randomly chosen, either the front one or the back one, by 4%, right? And then this one, right, it's a little bit more difficult to explain, so I'll explain it more in depth in the code review. But essentially what it says is that the burger, right, it goes up. It goes up by a timer. So if the moment that you got it was the perfect sweet spot between 0.48 and 0.53, you'll get extra points, right, because it was closest. And as for the last aspect, uh, you need to make it so that if the player wins 50 bucks, he wins and he'll go to a win state. And you need to keep track of how many people they have served, how many people have left to display it when they win or they lose. And if 10 people left, then you lose the game and you go to a lose state, right? And in both accounts, you need to put in the screen how much money you had up until the point. Okay, and that's pretty much for the general overview of, it, of things. I'll go more in depth in the code review. And if you have any questions, make sure to bring them so I can, you know, answer them, right? So the next code review will be a little bit different because since I already explained a lot of the core concepts, I'll just be going over code, trying to explain the different nuances and giving tips and tricks of what's going on. Okay, so make sure to come with questions. And I exhort todo el mundo que vaya because it's always helpful. Okay.